What's up y'all? How's it going with all my favorite YouTube subscribers and all my Instagram followers? Welcome to today's video on Sterling on Cinemas. That's Cinemas with an S. And today I'll be giving you my review on Incredibles, Incredibles, catching the peg like pow, pow, pow. Before we begin, if you are new to this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, or if you're new to this playlist, leave a comment on the section below. And most importantly, watch me. And same thing that goes if you're on Instagram. Don't forget to follow me if you're new, like it, share it with your friends and family to help the view numbers grow. And most importantly, leave a comment if you have anything good to say about the film as well. Now, before I begin, before I go forward, I wish I would have acknowledged this much earlier before, but I, re I can really, I really have appreciated all of the people who have watched my Toy Story 2 review because Right now, that is the number one video on my channel with the most views over. Last I checked, it's got about 275 views. So I just want to thank all of you for supporting me on that one. I know I was very insightful, like less than eight minutes on that one. But thank you for all of those views. Like every time I see that, I can't bear but to smile. So let's get into the review on The Incredibles. So in this lauded Pixar animated film, Married Superheroes, Mr. Incredible, voiced by Craig T. Nelson, and Elastigirl, voiced by Holly Hunter, are, vo are forced to assume mundane lives as Bob and Helen Parr after all superpowered activities have been banned by the government. Sound familiar? While Mr. Incredible loves his wife and kids, Dash, Violet, and Jack Jack, he longs to return to a life of adventure, and he gets a chance when summoned to an island to battle the Omnidroid, who is an out-of-control, four-legged robot. Soon, Mr. Incredible is in trouble, and it's up to his family and him to save the day from danger. Now, here's my take on the story. The Incredibles is such a crowning achievement for Pixar, and it upped the ante in a lot of ways. The Incredibles marks the first time, I know this may not be a big deal, but listen, the Incredibles marks the first time any Pixar movie has been rated PG. Specifically, in the case of the film, it's rated PG for action and violence in some segments. It is the first time the studio gets to experiment with animated humans and using them as the main type of characters in this movie. They would have had to have a certain budget before they could mostly have people in these movies. Until then, they just stuck with the polishing toys, the hardworking insects, the vibrant fish, and the furry monsters. The humans that were in those movies, though, not to say, that's not to say that there were no humans in those previous movies. Of course there were. I mean, like, the way Andy looked in the first Toy Story, if you, if you look that image up, he looks nothing like Dash looks in this movie. Like, Dash looks way more refined compared to Andy, and that just shows how far they've come with animated humans. They have gotten better, and they will continue to get better even after... They have continued to gotten better after Incredibles. So, they didn't look so realistic, so they decided to wait until they could afford better technology to perfect human designs. And The Incredibles was the perfect time to do it. But I will say that even in 2004, this animation was so groundbreaking when you put it next to the first Toy Story. Like, the first Toy Story looked more like stop motion or like... It's it's just it's just low quality animation as opposed to this one in 2004. It also allowed Pixar to go a step further into the idea of exploration of different settings. Like I said going forward, Pixar would continue to see to take the audiences to different locations in the different worlds. Like the last time we saw Pixar, you know, we was all over the ocean, right? And then we got a little bit of this in Monsters Incorporated, we're going to different worlds through through the via doors, via closet doors. But the tradition of exploration was not a big focus in the older films because of the animation budget. Now, all animation qualities and stepping stones aside, The Incredibles was such a breakthrough story for Pixar, period. Nobody could have ever guessed that an animation studio that is known for having heartwarming stories like Toy Story would be able to pull off such a spectacular superhero tale, y'all. Like, I mean... There are some relatable aspects in The Incredibles that make it extremely entertaining and timeless whenever you watch it. Like, every time we watch this in elementary school, I'm, I'm not the only one, obviously. Most of you, 
Every time you've watched this movie in elementary school, everybody rooted for Incredibles. Like everybody loves Incredibles. Whether you just love superheroes or Pixar or you just love it as a movie period, like you'll always root for Incredibles. Like if there was a couple of Pixar films, almost everybody would raise their hands for Incredibles. Now, the correlations between the Incredibles and most other families, like dysfunctionality or drama between couples, is what makes the film just as valuable as gold. Because there are some, there are also some plot points that have been used in other superhero movies before and after it. For example, people born with powers, X-Men. I mean, I talked about X-Men yesterday, so what a coincidence. Or the government trying to put their hand on forcing the heroes to go into hiding and never to come back. Now, the government has has always tried to do something with the heroes, whether it's keeping them in check, trying to kill them, or telling them, or commanding, demanding them to do something. It's the same concept. I'm talking about the Incredibles, Captain America Civil War, and the X-Men franchise. Like, see, in Captain America Civil War, we saw the government put these heroes in check, but Incredibles, they tell them to go into hiding and never come back. The story through... The story, though, feels different from most superhero films, especially those set during the Golden Ages. The tone of the film is stylish and retro with the combination of the fast-paced and fantastic action that will never get old. And especially the way they animate the technology in this film is very appealing as well. And some of the flashy character designs does make it really stick to the very retro and and um very complex style of the movie. It's a it's a it's a style it's a it's a very stylish sense of art is what I'm trying to say. And now we get to the characters. I did say that previously, that previous Pixar films had humans in it, but they did not look presentable enough to be the main characters. Like, like in Toy Story, the toys were more of the focus. So the way they animated toys in the first Toy Story movie looked much better than the way Andy looked or his mom. Like Andy's mom looked like, like Andy looked like Chucky the doll. But in this one, they look more like people. But The Incredibles marks the first human protagonist in a Pixar film. There are two things that makes The Incredibles family different from other superhero teams. Two reasons. A lot of superhero teams call themselves family, like the Guardians of the Galaxy consider themselves a family that was formed, as well as the Avengers, because they pretty much live in the same place. But The Incredibles are, are a literal biological family. They are a father, son, they are a father, mother, sister, brother. And and baby child. They are a literal superhero family. Also, the Incredibles are an original superhero team. What does that mean, Sterling? In other words, it's a self-made team. It's the one of the only, the only team, I was about to say one of the only teams, one, the only superhero team to not come from a comic book film. Like, it is straight out of Pixar. This is straight from the minds of John Lasseter and the people at Pixar back then. However, the Incredibles has always made me think of the Fantastic Four, considering that this it came out a year prior to this. Because, like, think about it. Now, you may have caught this, too, on the numerous 12 dozen million times you've watched Incredibles. Both Mr. Incredible and Thing possess super strength. Mr. Fantastic and Elastigirl possess elasticity. And the Invisible Woman and Violet can both become intangible, right? Now, there is no member of the Fantastic Four that has super speed like Dash in The Incredibles. But if you take Jack-Jack and one of his powers to burst into flames, you can pretty much compare it to the Human Torch. Now, some of the characters have the most quotable lines in, anime, in any animated picture. Like, even, even still today, I still be quoting lines from movies, like, a lot. Like, when I'm talking to myself, I quote lines because they're just so iconic. Like Dash's school teacher. Coincidence? I think not! Or Frozone. Honey! What? Where's my super suit? What? Uh, where is my super suit? I, uh, threw it away. Where? Why do you need to know? Because I need my super suit and all of his glory, woman. We are trying to save the greater good. Greater good? I am your wife. I'm the greatest good that you will ever be gonna get. But the character that really stole the show when she was on screen was 
Edna Mode, voiced by the director himself, Brad Bird, darling. And by the way, the reason that the name Brad Bird may sound familiar to you is because I critiqued one of his other movies earlier this year, The Iron Giant. And of course, he directed the sequel to Incredibles. He directed Ratatouille, Tomorrowland, and Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. So, considering that if you see how all how great all those movies were, you pretty much fall in love with Brad Bird's work and how much heart and spectacle he has at each of these movies. The character of Edna Mode always brought those exciting and heroic vibes that made us love the Incredibles franchise in the first place with her flamboyant attitude and mannerisms. But overall, it is so cool and fresh to see an iteration of non-Marvel superheroes that are still relatable, mostly because they are a family. And whenever we see the family arguing over certain things like like what's best for the kids or or directions on the road, you know, the audience can see themselves in those situations because they have families as well. Now, the fan favorite Pixar character, Buddy Pine, aka Syndrome, is another villain who pretty much who is pretty much the product of the protagonist's mistake. Now, in this case, we saw how ecstatic and enthusiastic Buddy Pine was toward Mr. Incredible, right? Y'all remember the opening moments? He was very, he, he wanted to be involved, and Mr. Incredible, the titular superhero, simply ignored that. And as a result, he became more of a successful superior than he thought he would be with advanced technology and resources. Like, I, compare, I made this comparison to Syndrome being like Aldrich Killing in Iron Man 3, or if you watch my Spider-Man Far From Home review, I compared him to Mysterio and how he was a, as starting out, he was a technical underdog trying to follow in the footsteps of somebody he looked up to or worked for, and they turned him down, and then as a result, they ended up becoming more powerful than they could have ever imagined. But where we see these characters, by the time the movie soars away itself away, makes for a perfect cliffhanger that leads us into the sequel. 14 years later. Rotten Tomatoes gives The Incredibles a 97% score. Now, I just want to I just want to state a quote from one of the most optimistic critics that I just happen to love. Mr. Peter Travers from The Rolling Stones called The Incredibles back in 2004, James Bond, Indiana Jones, and the X-Men all rolled into one. And I let me tell you something, Mr. Travers, I could not agree more. Because it certainly does have the secret agent type of style of James Bond, the jungle action of Indiana Jones, and the superhero formula of the X-Men. Pixar certainly offered an irresistible superhero formula the, through The Incredibles with fun action, flashy visuals, relatable jokes, a nice blend of classical music and jazz that sets the mood for them scenes, and a very original story. I will give this movie... A perfect score because I love it so much. I will love The Incredibles. The The Incredibles has a special place in my heart. So I will give it 10 SOs out of 10. So that is my review on Disney Pixar's Incredibles. You can let me know what you guys think about the first one in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with my next video. Bye.